Hi, let me show you how easy it is to deploy Confluence Data Center to Kubernetes with Ask. In the top window, I'm querying Kubernetes for objects, pods, or containers. Right now, we don't have any because I haven't deployed it. In the bottom here, I will deploy with Postgres. So it'll deploy a database as well. Let's see what happens. So all our objects are defining our desired state. Everything from cluster roles, ingress, describing how we route traffic outside the cluster into our service, and so on. And now in the top here, we see our services coming up. So we see Postgres is running, and we see Confluence Zero is running. Because our desired state is we want one Confluence right now. Now, in Kubernetes, we can query all the objects and we can see everything. We can also have Prometheus monitoring and scraping for metrics, and we can have Grafana displaying dashboards and so on. We can have alerting if a service goes down. Everything you get more or less for free with Kubernetes. Now, it'll take some time for Confluence to actually boot up the container, the Tomcat, and Confluence. So we'll just give it a minute. Each of these pods or containers get their own IP addresses. Along with that, we've created a service for both Postgres and Confluence, serving as an internal cluster load balancer that round robins between endpoints. We'll use that when we run data center. We'll get back to that. And we can see here the nodes in our cluster which node each service is running on. So Confluence is running on Cube Worker 1, and Postgres is running on Cube Worker 3. <coughs> so let's see if Postgres is starting up. And here we have Confluence. Let me zoom out. Now, here in Confluence, I've already installed or went through the setup guide, so you don't have to wait for that. I think you've tried that before. The interesting part is in the general configuration, and we need to log in. If we go to the very bottom here, we have this extra menu when you run data center clustering. If we go to this, we can see we have one node in our Confluence cluster running. Now, let's say we want to scale this. So let me show you how easy it is to scale. I tell Kubernetes I want a new desired state. I want to scale the stateful set, Confluence. I want to set the replicas to two. Now let's see what happens in the other window. Immediately, Kubernetes starts up another Confluence container or pod. <clears throat> and it starts to boot up. It gets its own IP, and we can see that it's running on Kube Worker 2 node. So the scheduler has figured out where to run this container. And if we go back to our Confluence, one thing you can see here is this line is bold. This tells us that I'm actually logged in to Confluence Zero. If we go to the very bottom, you can see down here as well, Confluence Zero. It tells me which node I'm actually on right now. So let's refresh this and see when it comes up. Now, another node has come up, Confluence One, but it's not ready yet. So the new Confluence has started and joined the Confluence cluster but it isn't ready yet to serve traffic. So it tells us up here in a warning that it's not reachable, but it's starting up. So let's give it some time. When it's ready, I'll kill the Confluence Zero node or container that I'm logged into. That way we should, if everything works, be connected to Confluence One node without knowing anything, without any disturbances basically. 
So let's see when it's ready. It'll take some time for it to boot up. Now we can see it's ready. <clears throat> this line is not bold, indicating it's not the node or the conference instance that we are locked into, but the other one. So um, we can see the load and the memory and how, f how much time it's been up and running. And if we refresh, we'll see the load going down. Now, let's see what happens if we kill Confluence 0. So I'll say Cube Control, Delete, Pot, and I'll kill Confluence 0. Now, the status right now of Confluence 0 is running. Now, let's see what happens when I execute this command. Now it's terminating Confluence 0, because that uh, that's what I asked for. But <clears throat> it's not my desired state. So once this Confluence 0 has ended, Confl uh, Kubernetes will spin up a new one for me. Now if I click on the menu up here, remember I'm on Confluence 0 right now. If I click on Confluence up here, you can see, hopefully, I get the dashboard, and now I'm on Confluence 1. You can see this at the bottom. The reason it took some time here is because Confluence 1 hasn't been accessed yet, so it needed just to be ready for the first request. And if we go back to the clustering menu, I need to log in. We can see we only have one running, Confluence 1. Now let's get back and see. Confluence 0 is still terminating. And this is because we gave it some time to actually gracefully shut it down. Once that's done, it'll spin up a new Confluence 0, because that's our desired state. And we can see here, it, it have already done that. It gets a new IP, it's still on Cube Worker 1 node, and at some point, in Confluence, you should be able to see that it's starting and joining the cluster. And here we can see Confluence 0 joining the cluster. Now, if I want to remove Confluence from this cluster, I can just remove my objects, my desired state, and Kubernetes will remove and clean up everything. So let's say, let's remove everything, see what happens. Now it terminates Postgres. And because we define our application as a stateful set, as opposed to a deployment, this is Kubernetes talk, but it'll actually terminate one service at the time. This is very healthy for stateful applications. And we give it time to actually gracefully shut it down. and it doesn't work because it's shutting down everything. The ingress, everything, nothing works. So that's it for this small tutorial on how Ask works, how easy it is to deploy, and how you can actually scale it with just one command. Thank you.